Acubile mi raza. So in this video, you're going to see me frag some of the rosters I was in this tank from my tank. And I'm going to transfer them into this tank. And I'm going to glue them. So you're going to need some super glue and some iodine. This little freshwater setup, it has some Anubis and some Christmas tree moss, but we're not going to mess with that tank today. So this tank, we're just going to be dedicated into this aquarium. Also, if you don't have yet a little Jackery or some kind of power station for your little mini tanks, you're definitely missing out. So that's how I'm powering up this little tank right here, my tank. And then some of the things you're going to need is just some super glue and some iodine reef dip, okay? So we're going to switch the camera and we're going to bring it a little bit closer and we're going to get started. Oh yeah, also you're going to need some uh, fragging material. So this is where I keep all the fragging shit. Also, if you're a pussy motherfucker, make sure you click out of my video. All right, so this is the uh, things that I'm gonna, you're going to need, just either the big size or a small size of the pliers, okay? So that's what you're going to need. And so we're going to start fragging my little coral and we're going to start transferring them, okay? So let me reposition the camera and we'll get started. Previously. So I know most people have this innovative marine 14 gallon tank. So if you want to know what to do and make your tank look a lot better, or if you don't think that this tank's going to look so great, so make sure you hit the thumbs up, thumbs down, thumb in your ass. I don't give a shit, but just make sure you follow along and let me show you how to transform this tank real quick. New Aquascape. New lighting. Back to business. All right. So if you pay a close attention to this aquarium, there's a lot of hair algae into this one right here, but I just leave it in there because the clowns are kind of hosting the hair algae, but it's usually that's something you definitely want to remove because it'll smother your corals and they'll kill them. But I'm just going to leave it in there for now. And I'm only going to put the corals like near the base of the rock structure 
And then eventually I'm going to start adding more corals. But this is really an anemone an tank. And I'm going to throw a little rose bubble tip or maybe even a green bubble tip in here just for the clowns. But um, I'm going to build a reef around the sea anemone. So I'm just going to add a starter coral. And this tank is running under my water chemistry. And like I said, something you're definitely going to need is the Kessel light. And pretty much use the same salt water as me. And then I'll give you some of the corals that I got for free. You don't have to pay me for anything for the corals if you're using my salt water. All right. I'll give you, I'll hook you up. All right, everybody. So I repositioned the mic so I could uh, get a little bit closer. But like I said, I'm going to frag some of my Rossozoas and then I'm going to dip them in iodine and then glue them into this aquarium right here, right around this spot right here at, at the base of this coral. I mean, uh, this uh, live rock or whatever. And so, yeah, so let's just get started. And basically when I frag it, I, I'm going to reposition the camera once again. And you're going to see me get a little bit closer to this guy. I'm going to cut them right now since right now they're closed up. And then we'll work our way from there. Okay. All right. So hopefully this is a good camera angle. Like I said, I'm going to cut the zoas probably in this side, the little corner right here, right there. And then hopefully I don't do too much damage to the coral. But like I said, I wish I'm not going to dip the mother colony, even though I should dip it, but I'm not going to take it all off because I see some of the zoas growing right here. And like you see my Monty, it's starting to grow. You see that? It's starting to encrust the, the glue and everything right there. You see that? That one's doing pretty awesome. They're all doing really good, actually. But anyways, uh, let's just get started. All right, so as you saw, it was pretty hard to get a good clean cut. Um, I had to actually unlodge the the whole tile or whatever, and then some of the zoas that were growing in the back probably retracted or whatever. But I got a nice little clean cut, and then I'm gonna dip it in iodine and then put it into the aquarium. But this uh, tile, I kind of unglued it, so I'm gonna have to glue it back in a little bit and then wait for the zoas to regrow over the other side. But Pretty much, it was a pretty much a success. And then I'm gonna do a little water change into this little aquarium because I know when you frag the zoas, they release a little bit of toxins in the water, and I don't want it to affect my other coral. But we're pretty much done right here with my little tank, and then we're gonna dip them, and then we should be solid. All right, so I got my little coral frag in the right here, and I'm gonna throw it inside the little cup just for now. It went in the upside down, but it's all right. All right, guys. So I'm going to flip this guy over real quick. And then. There you go. And you see that? Pretty good right there. So I'm going to leave it there for now. And then I'm going to switch over back to my tank real quick. All right. So I repositioned the camera and I'm going to re-glue the rossozoa tile back onto my rock and then we should be pretty good on there and that should be the end of my aquarium except you're going to see me do a little bit of a water change into this system okay all right so that should be good i glued the tile back on and it should be good so now we're just going to focus back on the Rossozoa polyps, and then we're going to put them into the 14 gallon aquarium, okay? All right, so now I'm just going to put the top back on, and we should be good. 
I have to fix my rock structure in a little bit. All right. But hopefully my polyps open up again. And then now we're just going to disinfect these little zoas right here. But I'm going to add a little bit of the tank water into this little cup to acclimate it. Even though it's the same water chemistry, I still want to acclimate them a little bit before I throw in the iodine in there. Okay. All right, guys, so now I'm just going to add some of this reef dip. And like I said, I bought this at Petco and pretty much you could buy it anywhere. You could buy it online. I think even cheaper, but Petco and PetSmart, they'll price match your. They'll price match the prices on the website. All right, so this reef dip, I bought it at Petco. And like I said, you could probably buy it cheaper online. And also PetSmart and Petco, they'll price match the prices they have online to the physical prices in the store. So remember to do that. That's how I got this one. But pretty much, we're pretty much all set. And then we're just gonna let this uh, settle in there for a little bit. So I'm just gonna remove the top from the aquarium. All right, so now I'm just going to remove the top. I'm actually just going to scoot it a little bit back and then. All right, so I just moved the top back and then I'm just going to work in this little section right here. And that should be plenty of room. So I'm just going to grab the coral and then place it in there. I'm probably going to add a little bit more iodine just real quick. <laughs> That's obviously way too much. So I'm going to take it out real quick. Okay. So what I'm going to do is. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue. Right here. And then I'm going to throw it right into the tank. All right, guys, so remember to go upside down because there's going to be a little film of glue that's going to go rise to the surface. And you don't want that to hit your coral. Otherwise, you'll super glue your coral together, okay? And then I'm going to go straightly down into the rock. All right, I'll call that a success. It doesn't want to go anywhere. I was trying to move it a little bit more down, but right there is perfect, right where it's at. And then it should have plenty of space to grow. And then I'm going to remove some of the hair algae so no algae grows near it. But pretty much that's how it's done, guys. It's that simple. It's not that hard. And like I said, I did drop a lot of iodine in there. So I had to get it out real quick. But pretty much, uh, we're pretty much done. And then we're going to wait for that guy to come out. And hopefully... They all come out, including my main colony, okay? But that's pretty much it. There's probably about one, two, three, f maybe like f three big heads and like two little babies on there. Maybe three little babies on there. But yeah, so we'll wait until they come out. And then if they don't come out, I'm just going to do a quick water change. But like I said, it's under my same water chemistry and it should be all right. And I'm just going to put the top back on and we're all pretty much finished here. All right, and just simple as that, guys. So we're just going to let that guy come out, and hopefully it'll heal up pretty nice. But like I said, it looks pretty solid. All 
All right, guys. So I don't have my uh, siphon tube. This is the one that's in this location. But I might have to gravel vac. Hopefully, some of the rock, the sand in the bottom. But if not, I'm just going to take water out directly. And then we're going to dump it into this bucket. And we should be solid, guys. All right, so honestly, it's that simple. And if you keep listening to a lot of people and you keep doing what a lot of people tell you, more than likely your corals are always going to be dying. But just do what I'm doing. It's pretty simple. And like I said, if using my salt water, I hook you up with some of the corals. But I took some of the toxins out that's in the water, and all the corals should be good. I can see this guy probably a little bit stressed out. I'm not sure if it's because I'm moving the light or it could be the toxins also, the little space invader down there. But it looks solid. And we're just going to move the aquarium back to where I always have it, back to the studio. And like I said, we're just going to focus on this guy now. And hopefully the polyps, like I said, hopefully they come out. But I'm going to do a little water change on this guy also, okay? On this tank right here. And we should be good. All right, guys. So I decided to do a little water change on this tank just to get rid of some of this hair algae on this side. And maybe some in the back corner. But just leave this section right here for the clowns. Like this little corner for the clowns with hair algae. Just so they could have something to be hosting. All right. All right, so this hair algae is pretty easy to take out manually. If it's bryopsis or whatever, it usually has more like a, a leaf-like to its uh, strands, but this is definitely hair algae. It's pretty easy to get out. That's why I'm not too worried about it. I feel like I probably took out a little bit too much for the clowns, but they have that little area right there. So now I'm just gonna go over with a little pipette and then get rid of all the sand that landed back on the coral, okay? All right, so this is a little pipette, and then I'm gonna go over the sand and get rid of some of that sand that landed on the coral. All All right, and we're done. Now I'm just gonna get rid of the water and put everything back and start cleaning up. All right guys, so I just took out the water pump and disconnected it now. I cleaned it and now I'll plug it back in. It was a little bit loud, so it had a little bit of hair algae stuck in the impeller, so I took it out and hopefully it's a lot quieter when I turn it on.
All right, so that brings us to the conclusion of this video. So as you saw, I moved all the rock scape and I fixed up the tank first before I added the Rostazoas. And I had a lot of fun with this little tank. And like I said, this is just the beginning. And you see me with the little flat piece of rock there. That's just for the clownfish to hopefully lay their eggs. But pretty much I want you guys to stick around if you like. And that's pretty much the end. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.